and then we were moving a, another chicken tractor to the chicken area and Addie got sprayed in the face by a skunk. So skunk face McGee is fine. She doesn't really smell that bad. I washed it out like right away. like all morning pruning tomatoes got the nice uh, tomato hands yeah I explained before that you prune up and expose the fruits so just taking another layer of foliage off each uh, in between each fruit set and pulling the suckers trellising and uh, killing hornworms too surprisingly this tomato tunnel is exploding with sun golds the same thing here because these are indeterminate tomatoes I'm just coming through and um, or just pruning the leaves off so fruit structure no leaves no leaves it gets the tomatoes to ripen quicker so this carrot bed that we seeded on Wednesday last week is now germinating um, we put it under the tarps white right side up you can see the carrot there carrot there carrot there there When you have hornworms, you, a lot of times you'll see like just parts of the plant are like sticks because the caterpillar ate them. And then you'll see like that is a fresh turd. Those are older turds back here, caterpillar turds. And so look for their fresh poop. Look up, there it is. There is a parasitic wasp that will eventually lay eggs in that, and then the eggs like grow out of it. They say if you plant sweet alyssum at the base of tomato plants, it'll attract the wasp. Uh, I didn't try this year, but I know the people that are doing it. I just squeeze them, or step on them when I see them. And now that the tomatoes are done, we gotta do a lot of bed prep and get stuff in before the rain. Some pretty gangster garlic. We're gonna harvest this tomorrow because it's gonna rain all week and we don't want any of this to rot. <laughs> Check out these little red cherries. Ooh, nice. Mm -hmm. It's a big candy roaster. There is. We like to call them Randy Coasters. First onion. You know onions are ready when the neck flops over like that. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> it is 54 right now. It's like 6 in the morning. This is insane. It's June. Uh, never thought I'd see that happen in North Carolina, but it is 2020. Uh, Tori is coaching a CrossFit class, and so I'm going to start getting this garlic out before the rain so that we can start curing it. Definitely not an ideal day to do garlic, but we gotta do what we can. So it's like 1,200 heads or so. Um, it's really not that much. And uh, 
If you really want to do it on a dry day, you just kind of have to do it now. I don't want them to rot out there. With, it's going to rain like all week. We have like a low pressure system that's just going to sit over us for the rest of the week. Um, so we're going to prep them here to cure them in the basement. And I'm going to start a fire on the wood stove. I got fans going, the dehumidifier is going, and they should cure just fine. I put some down there last night. They're already really dry. This is the variety music. Not that it really matters that much, but I know someone's going to ask. Well, we got all the garlic done and uh, setting down in the basement to cure with the wood stove on. And um, pruned all the cucumbers, planted a couple beds of transplants, and then we were moving a, another chicken tractor to the chicken area and Addy got sprayed in the face by a skunk. So that's interesting. So yeah, over two inches of rain. Pretty crazy day. We also broke a weather record today. Coldest summer day in 54 years. 2020, man. What's next? All right, this is the garlic curing spot. Got the uh, got the fans going. Got the wood stove on. So it should be good. What you doing, George? Uh, just washing some of the microgreen flats. Um, after a while they start to build up just like funguses and stuff and it kind of ruins the microgreens so just washing them down yeah I'm doing uh, equipment maintenance today we got like three inches of rain so you can't really do much in the field so yeah I hate doing mechanical stuff but it has to be done skunk face McGee is fine she doesn't really smell that bad I wash it out like right away hey buddy you all right yeah you fine I hate doing this stuff like it's so number one you can't find the tools number two everything's weird to get to number three it makes a mess <coughs> ah, the oil filter here Tori's older brother is a really good mechanic I have so much respect for that I can never do this for a job <laughs> It's just an oil change too. Okay, the mower's done, so fill out the tires, clean the air filter, oil change, uh, grease those wheels. Should be good. Now I gotta change the oil on the BCS. All right, that took way too long to do that stuff. Not the most exciting thing, but stuff we gotta do. So these onions are really forming up now with and with so much rain, um, the soil's soft. So I'm just gonna go through and hand weed it. Um, it's good podcast time. So that's the afternoon. Also, you know, if you want the good onions, you just, like at this stage, you just have to do the work, so the way it is. So Tyler called and said they ran out of salad at the honey hog so 33 pounds uh, just harvested it gonna take it there now and yeah what a weird week. <laughs> but it's also because of a functional U.S. democracy makes it uh, a lot busy in Russia.
getting stuff ready. I'm kind of just sitting around doing nothing. And um, <laughs> he's telling the truth. <laughs> what? I'm just kidding. <laughs> to, to keep 2020 rolling like 2020 is rolling, we got two more inches of rain last night. So that's five inches this week. <sighs> and there's storms like 10, 20 miles away towards the mountains. One thing that really does enjoy the rain though is the squash. This plot's looking awesome. And uh, we had fried squash at the Honey Hog on Wednesday when we went, and it was really good. Everything seems to be doing all right despite the rain, but it, you really don't, it's, it's really hard to tell until like two or three days later. All right, farm pickups went real good, like surprisingly well because it stormed at the beginning of them. So I'm uh, really grateful for our customers. It's awesome to be able to open our farm for a few hours once a week and have people show up to buy stuff directly from here. It's pretty cool. Uh, tree of the week is this one. Uh, it's kind of more like a shrub, but it's in bloom right now and it's a good plant for everybody to know. So this is an elderberry. And so you have pinnate leaves and you have opposite arrangement and elderberries like wet areas and elderberries are pretty adaptable they're they'll grow in a lot of different places but the flower is pretty much what gives it away and it was just blooming here um, in North Carolina last week there's probably still some in bloom but if you live north of here so zone seven six five um, be on the lookout for these guys. This is a good one to know, like to forage if you want to make elderberry syrup or things like that. Uh, this is where it comes from. The most notable thing on the elderberry is the flower. And normally this is a big white mass. And this is what makes it a dead giveaway when you're driving like on the highway, you can, you, you'll notice it right away. We actually got this plant from John and Angela, heirloom permaculture last March and it was like this big, so. They can grow quick. And also the um, new, new foliage is green. You can see where it's starting to get woody down the stem. The new green growth is also a good giveaway. Uh, apparently Japanese beetles really like this tree, which is good. Trees like this can kind of be like trap plants. And so then, you know, we could come through here and just kill all the beetles off this plant instead of the actual crops. This is a hibiscus and um, the Japanese beetles really love this one. They were all over it last summer, so it's pretty sweet. You know, you got two there, one there, one here. Uh, I'll go over this one later when it's flowering. It's like a hibiscus flower, but it's, it's also known as a Rosa Sharon. It's probably the more common name for it. All right, the markets went good, so we just gotta unload this here. This like all the coolers we take stuff in, and the crates for the display and stuff. Uh, yeah, and I have to move the um, meat bird still. Can you believe this? He's making me work on a Saturday. After I get home from the market on Saturdays, I unstack all the microgreens. So, a couple Saturdays ago when we first built this, I learned the hard way that I put everything out and unstacked them on Saturday and went to the market. When I came home, everything was roasted. So I wait until after the market now to unstack everything. 